Hi, it's Wayne O'Keefe here, and I'm uh, just fishing the Maribyrnong River this morning. Got a couple of hours, which is really good. Uh, suffering from a rotten cold at the moment, but uh, that's not going to stop me fishing. Nice and rugged up, so I'll keep warm. Uh, it's funny, I always do this. I usually set up my gear, cast in first, usually before I put any burley in or anything else, uh, just to see if there's any fish. Anyway, um, I cast in and to a spot just in front of me. What I did is I made sure that I cast to two positions. I take two rods, which you're allowed to do, and I cast one to depth where I think the sort of deep spot based on the conditions where I think the fish will be, and then a one one that's closer in because uh, if it's uh, as, as the tide is moving in, which it is doing today, the fish will follow the tide up and start to swim into those areas they feel safe in the shallower water where uh, things like little crabs, crustaceans, um, and various other things are taking refuge. So they follow that um, that water up and get a um, and follow them and get a meal. I cast in nice and close, and sure enough, I got a good bite. I ought, the, the other thing is, uh, and unfortunately, the end, the the, um, the end of this story is that I didn't actually get the fish. I would say the way I was finding was either, either a good sized brim, uh, maybe a pinky, or even maybe a trevelyan. I'm catching a few of those today. But I don't know if you've seen some of my videos before, you'll know that um, what I do is I have a what I call a survival pack, and it is for those hard days where you're really struggling to get fish. Anyway, what it did, what happens is I normally have a, my burley cage in, a running burley cage like this one here, and at the end of my main line, the line that's um, on my reel. I tie a light waist trace. Now this is really, really good when you're fishing in areas where, you know, there might only be sort of mullet about or uh, brim about, but small fish, not, not large fish. Uh, and because you've got to be really careful with those fish, especially when the fishing is hard, they need to, to, to bite on something that looks natural. Lightweight trace, small hook, small bait that moves in the water absolutely like anything, any other food item in that water is the thing most likely to catch fish. I always start with that, presuming that the, the fishing is going to be bad. Anyway, today, the only trouble is, occasionally you will lose a fish, and that's what happened. It broke that light waste trace off, uh, and it didn't give me much time at all. A couple of took it. Peeled off a little bit on the drag. I didn't have the drag set quite properly, uh, and then broke me off. So I'm not going to do any more lightweight traces now, unless the fishing gets really bad. So. If the fishing gets tough and I can't catch anything, I'll go back to a lightweight trace. But at least I know there are fish in there. Okay, I've got one just now, and I'd say this is a little mullet, just uh, <coughs> on that second rod. Not a big one, but at least it's a first fish for today. <coughs> okay, there we go, first fish of the day. And um, and they're biting early, so this is this is really good. And hopefully, as the tide comes up, I'll get more of these. So it's just a matter of casting that same spot with your burley every time. That'll get it. Um, and usually, into a rising tide is always helpful. It's interesting. Um, I'm, as you'll see, I'm holding this rod here. This is um, my new rod, my um, my Bass Red fishing rod. It has two top sections. I've actually changed down the line a little bit, got a little bit lighter um, because I found the bigger fish. Um, aren't biting as much as those smaller fish and also this reel I've got the the hunter reel which I match with this has two spools so I've changed down spool as well so I've changed the top section of the rod the spool on this put lighter line on so the same rod and reel setup I've just changed over so that I've got um, all of those items oh my goodness that is the biggest flock of cormorants I've ever seen I just heap, hope they keep going my god there's probably 50 in that. If they were to stop here, I'd never get another fish. Oh no. Can you see this? These are cormorants and a large flock of them. And what they're doing is they're swimming across and pushing those fish into the shallows and then taking them off. Look how many there are. Oh, this is going to wreck the fishing for me if they come up here. But they're following the fish, so there must be a large school of fish in there. But look. I don't think I've seen a school of cormorants that big. And you can imagine, not much gets away from them. When you've got that many, they can herd everything and swallow everything in sight. If they come up this way, my fishing is done. Okay, I've got another one. Probably another little, um, uh, 
little mullet I would say, but they're coming in. Yeah, so they're, they're not not huge fish, but about the same size, but they're certainly coming in early, so that's pretty good. But um, I'll just keep going. Well, I'm officially a home wrecker. I just cast in just then, and as I did, a pigeon was flying along. It had a twig in its beak, must be making a nest. <laughs> And as the the uh, the line caught the twig and knocked it out of its beak, the pigeon's okay, but I don't know if that nest is going to get built. <laughs> okay, is a nature wonder. Well, there's no doubt about it. Today, the only way to catch these fish is to basically be holding your rod. Um, I'm getting bites, but I cannot. You've got about a strike into those straight away. I cannot just leave the rod. They won't hook themselves. And uh, so when you're doing that. You've got to use the touch method, just allowing the fish to actually pull on the line and um, feeling minimal resistance, get a bit of confidence, swallow that bait and then strike into it to hopefully hook them. And they get off pretty quickly too. I've had a couple that I've got part of the way in and lost. So it's um, it's been a real challenge today. There's plenty of fish there. that They'd be small mullet, I'd say, and they are notoriously hard to catch. So sometimes I have to, I can only use one rod at a time, I can't use two because um, I just missed all the bait, bites and I'm filling them now and okay so I think I might have this one now, um, no I've lost him but uh, it's just it's been very hard to get those in so it, oh no I've got him but it's only a small one <coughs> okay so this is what's been doing it all day, this stuff about this size. And as I say, I've, you've got to hold the rod to be able to get them in. You will not catch it if you just sit there with your rod in a, in a rod holder. So important point. So if you have a good graphite rod where you can feel everything, then you can hook those fish on those really, really tough days. So it's been a bit satisfying to be able to do this. Um, but it just takes a little while to work it out. Oh my goodness. Now I have two cormorants in the area, quite big ones, fishing right where I put my bait. Fantastic, so with these swimming around here there's going to be nothing else to catch. They've been lingering around for a while now, probably because I've attracted the fish into the area. Uh, there's the other one, he's just gone under, uh, there's the other one right over the top of my bait. So when this happens there's not really much you can do. Um, and they've been around for a while, so I think I'm going to have to call it quits today, unfortunately. If they hang around here all afternoon, I'm just, or all morning at least, I'm not going to catch anything. It's still over there, and they're still moving around. So, like, that's just nature's way, I guess. But they're going to outgun me today. So, I have to call it quits. And with this wind getting heavier and the rotten coal I got, uh, I think that's enough. So, the thing that's been really essential today has been, one, it's been holding the rod so you can feel all the action, hook those fish. Uh, two is making sure you've got burley. I haven't had any bites on, on the rod with the spear rod that I've used. Well, I've got to bait it up but I haven't um, I haven't burled out for a while. No action on that at all. So it uh, really is just making sure you've got burley in the area and that's ac accurate casting as well to make sure that that one area has burley to attract those fish. Uh, that's been the key today. So um, it's been rewarding in that uh, finding that out and catching a few fish but um, I gotta go. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you're interested in any of the gear, just have a look at my website.